All right, and we are live. I'm having some screen region issues, it looks like. Mm -hmm. Very odd, actually. Give me one sec to see if I can figure this out, guys. All right, so you guys will have to bear with us. Um, apologies, of course, this is week six. I'm joined by none other than Dante, the six-time skirmish champion. Welcome, Dante. I'm going to be... <laughs> but I will be having to re-screen re uh, region everybody here. So a little bit of technical difficulty, but should be able to fix it real quick. Oh, they're having trouble hearing you as well, Dante. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, and everything looks fine. Sorry, guys. This is... Let me... Speaker is high. To... All right, go ahead, Dante. Talk. Can you guys hear me better yeah. now? Yeah. Huh. Thank, thanks for that, d -Mosk. But, uh, yeah, it looks like everything is off. Weird. Okay. Interesting. You know when it rains, it pours, they say. I guess so, yeah. You, you think that uh, the... If before uh, before the stream, like mic check and everything would be good enough, but sometimes uh, things just go awry. That's okay. We're adaptable here. Uh, we're starting with the barraging beatdown. It looks like for the brute player, um, just into a mandible claw. Um, only intimidating one coming in for uh, it's a yellow barraging. I think I can't really tell the color to be honest with you, so I'm not going to speculate on <laughs> how much damage it's going to be doing. Uh, more than three. Um, I'm assuming that Jason's probably going to choose to block with two cards from hand rather than taking the damage here. Um, we'll see what he ends up deciding to go with. Uh, I'm just taking a look at the armor choices. Uh, they look pretty standard. Heart and cross wrap for uh, for the KO player. Um, I, I've seen that a lot more. Well, not that I see a lot of KO to be honest with you, but I do see that more KOs that I see are usually running the heart and cross wrap over something like the bark bone strapping. Um, and that's usually because uh, the majority of the cards in their deck cost two. Uh, so the Heart and Cross Draft basically just allows them to play an attack for free. Um, Jason's just thinking about how he wants to defend here. Uh, like I said, my assumption would probably just be two cards from hand to avoid the additional damage. Um, either that or he will opt not to block. But it looks like he is going to go with the two cards from hand here. A Singing Steel Blade and an Out for Blood. Um, and his opponent's just going to play a Sigil, Arsenal, and Pass. Uh, so Jason's got three cards to work with here on his turn. Um, if I were guessing, I'd probably say Pitch and Swing. Uh, but, oh, it's going to be another Warrior's Valor, actually. And he's pitching the Iron Song Determination. So that's uh, pretty good knowledge for his opponent. Um, first card he pitched was a Blue Warrior's Valor into an Iron Song Determination. If it gets to late game and the opponent sees the, the Blue Warrior's Valor again, um, then he knows that an Iron Song Determination is probably uh, coming soon as well. So we'll see how the opponent decides to uh, to block this one. It looks like maybe he played a double sigil because he's at 25 life, and I believe that KO starts at 19. Um, so it'll be a little bit interesting. 
This is a lot of talking, Brendan. Yeah, bro, you could literally be doing this. This is like, this seems like a baseball game over the radio at this point. I'm still, dude, I'm, I'm literally screen, I'm screen regioning from like the very beginning. Like, I'm pulling it up, resizing, like literally everything. It's terrible. <laughs> like, it's, it's terrible. But I'm making it, I'm making it happen, you know? It's okay, I'll, I'll just, I'll just keep going here. <laughs> You're like, this is a lot of talking. I'm like, dude, bro, they literally see Forever. nothing right now. I forgot what it's like to have a uh, partner to do commentary with. This is uh, this is exhausting. Um, but we got a demolition crew being played here, revealing a card that costs, uh, I believe it's three or more on demolition crew. I can't remember exactly, but he's revealing the card from his hand to allow him to play it, and he does indeed hit a um, a five on that. So the demolition crew has dominate, and I believe it's coming in for twelve damage because it looks like it is a red demolition crew. So. Uh, that will be a pretty good, a pretty sizable amount of uh, of health that's going to be coming out of uh, out of Jason here. We'll see if he decides to throw a card in front of it to prevent at least three of it and just take nine, um, or if he'll throw any armor in front of it as well uh, just to keep it blocked. It's tough to say. I almost feel like I'd prefer to keep my armor for something with um, with an on hit effect, um, but it looks like he is actually committing the Courage of Blade Hold and the Refraction Bolters. Um, this is pretty good too. It just allows him to use the armor on both those cards before he actually decides to uh, to play them. Um, sometimes, if if you need to use them, oh, he's using the skull cap too here. I guess he really does not want to go too low. His opponent is at twenty five health, um, which would be uh, you know big a big uh, I guess hill to climb back up if uh, if he were to get lower. So he's going to end up taking four here. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, but it allows him to effectively get a block out of his skull cap, his courage, and his um, refraction bolters. So if he wants to break the courage and the refraction bolters this turn, at the very least, he got uh, use out of them. It looks like he's starting with a uh, hit and run. I think it's a red hit and run, if I recall correctly. He was using that in his deck last week, um, pitching a blue. So two resources floating, uh, one card in hand, one in arsenal. He could definitely have the twinning blade here if the opponent decides to overcommit with the block. Um, we've seen, uh, we saw Brendan do that today and it's, uh, felt really <laughs> bad for him. Alrighty. <laughs> I was going to say, dude, like, uh, big props to Dante for casting. Uh, you know, fuck Dante. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to throw my shade, man. You didn't let me drop my mask that one turning. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, so it looks like the opponent is just going to be taking it here. Um, which, you know, good for Jason. He just gets to spend another resource and swing the sword again. Uh, nothing too crazy here. The opponent might also just opt to, to take it again, but if I were a betting man, I would say that he's probably going to end up blocking it here. Um, I'm guessing probably two cards from hand to get it fully blocked. Um, he's really only got to be worried about like a Singing Steel Blade into an Iron Song response because there's only uh, one resource floating, but it looks like he is just going to end up taking it? Or they... Touch their. Uh, okay, they put the life down, but that was probably for something else. Um, I'm beginning to lose my mind here. It's okay, dude. I'm losing <laughs> my mind. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm at too? the I'm at the tail end of this. I'm at the tail end of this. Oh my gosh! And it's just. Yeah, Let's it's go. That is like on the list of things you do not want to do when you're starting up a stream. Is yeah. uh, rescreen region literally everything? That was terrible. But we're back, and I'm looking at this. Hey guys, let me know if it's easier if both players' screens are faced up, or if you like the one faced up and one faced down. So kind of like they're facing each other. Um, it's really easy to fix that. It's just a transform. So let me know what works. But all right, yeah, I'm coming into this game obviously five minutes late after you know literally sweating here trying to get that down. Both face down, eh? Both yep. are face down. Yeah, you yeah. Just, you just played a twinning blade here to allow for his dawn blade to swing a third time, um, and now it has a counter on it as well because it just hit. So um, his opponent's going to have to decide if he wants to take an additional uh, four damage. Uh, but it did get rid of the refraction bolters, so uh, his opponent is going to opt to take the additional damage, um, and Jason is just going to draw back up here. I'm assuming that uh, his opponent's probably got something pretty big cooking up here because. Uh, Otherwise, I don't really see. Oh, ravenous rabble. Okay. Oh, oh revealing red a red sink below, sink below too. So it's four before, damage yeah. coming in hot, but I'm pretty sure you just take it. No reason not to. Ravenous rabble just basically says deal some free damage to your opponent because there's no way they're blocking it. Because uh, whatever you have coming up now, an e strike. Oh my god. Okay. This is like no KO deck I've ever seen. 
You, you see, see E-Strikes in KO decks? I was going to say, you see, you see, you've seen KO decks? <laughs> I've seen one or two, yeah. My I love them. Rob. Yeah, I love them for the spice. Not Tolarian dropouts, but another friend Rob. No, I love them for the spice, but like, um, yeah, I mean, we actually saw a crazy game out of James recently. Um, he, like, played against Tower number nine and rolled a lethal demonization crew, and Tower Gamblers gloved it and stopped it. It was pretty good. Mm, I think I remember that, actually. I think I was watching the stream. Um,. <laughs> So yeah, so I mean, we'll, we'll see here. No no roll on the E-Strike, so it's probably just coming in for 7. Uh, nothing too crazy, but it is it is quite a bit of damage, so I, Jason's just thinking about how he wants to block that. Yeah, I mean, Jason's got that counter, right? So he's yeah. this E-Strike is actually, I don't know if it's ideal for him, but it's, it's just straight damage, which damage in this matchup is obviously not the same as it would be in another because KO can always can dominate you with that demolition crew or hit you yep. with like a command and conquer for for 12 who knows <laughs> so, there's so much that this can do yeah you don't you don't really want to be taking it but at the same time you definitely want to preserve the counter that's on your sword right now so uh it's in a bit of a tough spot it looks like he's just gonna take oh he was only swinging for five okay okay uh, so he's gonna take two here and then what have we got next a command and conquer for 12 how many cards does he have in hand I have no idea. I think one in hand. I'm just kind of, oh, okay, pitches, so we're pitching beast things. Claw, claw for three. I mean, technically more damage, right? So you're coming yep, at three. Yeah, more damage. Yep, and he just takes the three here. So down to seven. And we will see uh, what he ends up swinging back with. He does have four cards to work with. So uh, we'll see uh, what those end up being. It looks like we're starting with a sharpened steel into a sword swing for seven. Not bad, coming um, in for seven. We don't have yeah, too no. much armor available. I mean, we have these capskin leathers, obviously, and the skull. I mean, skull cap is kind of turned off, but yeah, we'll see how he has to block here. No boots for for Jason. No, no boots. So if he does take the hit, um, you know, you really only have to be worried about a glint or something like that. But um, I mean, we'll see. It looks like he is choosing to block from hand here. Um, mm. No, f no fear on the old glint. Um, Blocking for draw for seven. Blocking yeah. for yep four seven. seven. It's a, yeah, yep. it's a so scar for scar. Blocks it all, and then we'll see what Jason has in hand here. If he's going to pump it to go over the top, um, or play maybe a glint, draw a card, and then pump it after with uh, with the, whatever the card it is that he draws. Uh, we'll see. Uh, he's going to play a stroke of foresight though. Okay. Uh, very good card. It allows him to see what the top card of his deck is and put it on either the top or the bottom. Um, if he doesn't like it, he'll put it on the bottom, and it looks like he doesn't. Uh, either that or he's yeah. stacking. There's the red, the yeah. Like Demos yeah. said, there's yeah. the red sink that we revealed off the rabble. Yep, exactly. So, so gonna lose that counter. Uh, I mean, this this Brute does have Heart and Cross Trap, so it could still have an active turn here, for sure. Yep, you never know. As long as that thing's up, there's always something, uh, there's always something going on for the Brute here, so... We'll see what he ends up going with. Um, it was quite a few cards out of hand, though, for him, so... We'll, we'll see how, how lively of a turn he can have. Um, I'm assuming he'll, yeah, he, he is going go. to to use it here uh, yeah. to play a pack hunt. So he'll get an Intimidate, and then we're going to be rolling, and yeah. uh, Jason is praying. <laughs> He's got to hit this, though. Great. I mean, this pack hunt comes in for three. It's like it's so bad right now, but if it comes in for 12, I mean, I think that oh. that statement can always be said. Uh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it is coming in there we go, three. bud. I love how, uh, like, yeah, and no, okay. Really, and no Gambler's Gloves out of the Warrior. I'm pretty sure no, the Warrior no, does run no, Gambler's no. Glove in the in the armor suite literally just for KO. Yeah, so, like, he might don't. have forgot to put it in oh. for this matchup, or he just, you know, decided that it might not be worth you know it. What I, you know what I didn't notice? James but. here has a full art KO from Fry the Eggs. I can only assume it's that artist, because um, he does pretty much all of them nowadays, but... Yeah, I didn't notice. I was like, "What uh, is yeah, it? Nice like, why does this nice KO look so there. cool?" Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen some of your cards from uh, from that same artist, and they yeah, look them. pretty dope. Uh, the viscera, I think, specifically looks unreal. Oh yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, quick. Uh, I guess I guess quick shameless plug to that guy because he's he's just awesome. <laughs> doing his, God's uh, work yeah, here, yeah, fry the <laughs> eggs. I mean, it was literally. I mean, it was twenty dollars a card, which is super reasonable for commissions, and it was less than a week turnaround time. I mean, it was wow. It was an amazing experience. Like I would use it awesome. every day of the week. Wow. So we're gonna block for eight. Uh, um, still takes one there, but yeah. that basically gets every card out of his hand. So 
it's not really what you're looking for, but you know, he has as as many high rolls as KO can get. He's also going to get some low rolls at some point. So yeah, I mean, so you got to be thinking of like, hey, you can't roll a five or six every time, right? So just toss yeah, the hand exactly. and drag him into the later game. But uh, yep. yeah, I mean, we got also we got also mention. I think we did at the very beginning. Jason Thompson Shack is actually our gauntlet champion right now. He won last mm-hmm. week, so definitely a target on his back to uh, you know see if he can go back to back and win two cases two weeks in a row. Talk about value. Man's gonna win it. He's gonna be able to quit his job after when he's gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a pretty a pretty amazing player to the UK though. So, uh, or not the oh my god, sorry. In, in I'm New still Zealand. in uh, in this afternoon's matches. Yeah, out of New Zealand. Um, so. Yeah, very prolific warrior player. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows this man's name, especially after winning the gauntlet, the most prestigious tournament around. Yeah, best prizing, most prestigious tournament, and very low buy-ins. Check it out at www. No, I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll plug it after the stream. Don't worry. But yeah, so what do we got here? We got a looks like a swing for three, which was blocked with a fate for scene, and now we're we're just going into barraging beatdown territory, which you really don't want to see if you're Jason, but. Listen, it I, is the reality of playing against the KO. Uh, like, these things happen. So I, I love watching high level technical flesh and blood, but I also love watching people just roll sixes and come in for like fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, listen, it's fun watching. It's not fun when you're the guy getting uh sixes rolled. Here we go. Sure. Here we go. Let's see it. Oh, there's a lot of shaking, shake and bake. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, another one. Oh. oh my god. Oh yeah, you can even pull up my scale, weigh that dice. What the heck's yeah, going on? Jeez, this is a little bit a little bit wild. Rip, um ripping fire. It's gonna block for a seven here. And what, yeah. how much is he taking off of that? I mean takes five. It takes five, yeah. Fourteen, yeah. Put that on the one. Jeez. Yeah, that Woo! is uh, that's not what you want to see, but we basically like it's it's one more good roll out of the KO uh for, for game here, so um, dude i'm loving Jason's this it's probably pretty frustrated but uh but this is what happens sometimes when you're the champ uh somebody's gonna high roll against you and uh hey. that's it. it's not over till it's over we know jason runs hard in his deck so he could be gaining life yes indeed yes indeed gotta watch out for that demolition crew though because that definitely does threaten lethal on yeah. a high roll like that's gonna be that's good so like i think we saw in the chat too like someone mentioned they didn't see the um uh, like the appeal of Demolition Crew, and I assume that it is really just to close out games if you aren't able to string together multiple Intimidates so they stop tossing the hand in front of these crazy attacks. You finally get like yeah. a massive dominated attack and just win. I think so too. I think so too. It's just basically like your end game strategy to, to actually be able to close out the game because if you low roll enough, you're you're going to be a sad guy. I can promise you that. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. I'm assuming that he's probably just taking the uh, the three damage yep. from the route. Uh, Take the three, roll a six. Let's go. Yeah, here, here we go. We'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully for for Jason's sake, there's no six being rolled. That would just be depressing for him. Um, but it happens, and we're going with the brutal assault. So let's go. Here, here we go. Oh, and he had the. Uh... Okay, good. He couldn't. I guess he couldn't show. Oh my God, bro! Oh, man. What is going on? Oh no! Could he play oh, that? He, could, he couldn't play the demolition crew. That's oh, oh Jesus! And bro, he's got potion. And oh no! Oh, Jason takes it. Jason takes down the champion with the with the with the five to five to six. <laughs> Let's go. You hate to see it, but uh, that's. That's flesh and blood for you. Sometimes that happens. I uh, K was what I like to call the tournament ruiner. Um, whoever you go up the gates, you're gonna ruin the tournament. So uh, we'll see if Jason can claw his way back. There is a top eight for this tournament, um, so losing round one is not you know an immediate uh, death sentence into not making the. Top oh eight. yeah, for sure. He um, can run. He can run the gauntlet per se oh, and totally come sure. back. Um, for sure. I just like. I love it. Like I love it. I love that we just saw that was five, five, six, baby. Like it doesn't get any better. Like just <laughs> yeah. Come the in. ideal rolls on uh, on basically every attack that he's played. So Oof. nothing, nothing you can do about that. Unfortunately, it uh, it happens, and that's that's kind of the situation that we're in. And there but, goes the champ taking the taking the early loss. Now he's okay, gonna. I'm 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 almost 100 percent sure we'll see him in the top. Yeah, eight. he gets I, uh, he gets I would never. I would never count him out. So. 
Um, I'm assuming he's a little salty after that one, so I want to give him some time to uh, to get out of the game because one of our rules is that they have to stay in the game with their opponent. So I love it. He's uh, got to sit here and simmer and think <laughs> about it. <laughs> we got to let him know. We got to let him free. Man. Well, I think we got to talk about though is um, so yeah, it's actually going to happen probably in the middle of the next round. But there's a huge you'll see it in the title, but um, there's a huge spoiler going um, going down in the Flesh and Blood TCG community Discord in about 30 minutes, and it's totally game changing. I know a lot of people blow smoke at you and tell you like, oh my god my spoiler card is gonna change ranger like whatever no 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 no. this is like the like you've never seen any card like this it's totally different um i don't even know what you would call it it's like uh, i can't call it an archetype but it's a different card form we haven't seen it's crazy no shade (laughs) no shade but yeah i mean this card is actually absolutely unbelievable you guys gotta tune in to see it and um it is tied to the doomsday card so it's gonna be levia's kind of final piece of the puzzle so we see how that the blasphemet token or whatever blasphemet i don't i don't really know to be honest blasphemet yeah it's a good it's a good it's a good guess it's a good guess so yeah um definitely recommend you guys stay around and check that out obviously we got a shout out deck edge been here since day one it helps us provide crazy crazy prizes to these players like win a case right ten dollars in win a case absolutely unbelievable um can't say enough good things about um both jason the guy that runs it and deck edge uh itself he always opens patreon slots just for this tournament so check him out at www.deckedge.com um and yeah if you're looking for affordable prices for both collecting and playing that's the place to do it and then obviously yeah obviously reaper game store as well helps us out with a lot of these uh prizes xp all that kind of stuff and bill is my local lgs and been playing with me since 2019 um and all you guys know reaper game store definitely check out their mats and all kinds of stuff he's kind of the hookup for first edition unlimited all that good stuff um but yeah we're gonna take a quick break for round two um i'm sure jason's out there taking a walk maybe putting a few holes in some walls but he'll be back (laughs) i know i would be that's for sure all right guys we'll see you back soon all right see you in a bit
All right, and we are live with round two, and oh my gosh, the cameras are on and they work. This is, uh, this is a different world, it Dante. It is a miracle. I don't have to baseball cast this one. Nice. All right, so we got Azalea versus Kano. Um, our Kano player is actually someone by the name of Guy. I think you might know a little bit about him, Dante. Why don't you fill us in while I change these names? He is the best wizard player in North America. Okay. All right? No, 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 no. I don't want to hear it, all right? Listen, I call it like I see it. Oops. He is my boy, all right? And nobody beats this guy on Wizard. I'm telling you. He's disgusting. It's right. actually not even fair. Like, I feel bad for Moody. It's just, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's not good. It's not fair. It's not, you'll see. You'll understand. All right, all right, all right. Play, and you'll, it'll, it's all going to come together for you. Trust me. All about, like, all about you. He's on Team Canada for the uh, Red Ride Games uh, Canada versus Singapore thing. I played six games against him for practice, six games in a row before I had to go to another tournament, and I lost all six games. All right? You tell yeah, me that. but, like, is that a good lit litmus test to see if someone's going <laughs> <laughs> to... kind of sounds like a lie to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's won a few skirmishes, too, going undefeated on Kano as well. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's definitely he's a very good player. Yeah, so I didn't see this second die of our Azalea play there. Um, most likely, it's going to be pretty hard for Azalea to win. Azalea tends to run a lot of red. Um, the is that is there one null rune on bra on the bracers and one null rune on the cap as well? You got to remind me. Uh, <laughs> you got to remind me. You asked me when the last time I saw Azalea was. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd have been, to. I'd have to dust off. Okay, it's one on been a each. while. Is cool. he just not running null rune? No, no, no. And N R two for sure. He's on null rune too. Um, okay, is it on the cross wrap? There's null rune on the cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean. Oh, okay, okay. I understand your one trick, but come on, bro. Yeah, I know. Well, on it, I just I've literally never seen or played Azalea. Like it just doesn't happen. All right, so um, we're gonna cane out a blue snapback. Not good. Not terrible. Um, not see. ideal for sure, yeah. but. Run the Kano again here. I mean, we're just going to keep going with it. I'm wondering, like, whose turn it is. Like, if the Azalea opted to pass. There's a Blazing Ether. A Blazing, yeah. Hmm. Geese. Also not really ideal. I mean, Geese still has three cards, right? So he could find something else off the top here. Going to Kano again. Yep. Oof. That's a tough one. We're thinking, so... Is it a blue? Is it an eye? Nope. It's a blue Scalding Rain. Oof. Not fantastic. No luck here. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. one red card off the top, but I guess we're going to have to start paying for these Alrighty. now and just hit him with a Blazing Aether at the end of all of it. So. Yeah, I'm going to start with a Scalding Rain for two here. Nothing crazy. Not an insane amount of damage, but, you know, it's, it's something. Unfortunately, seeing all the blues on the top of his deck, I'm pretty sure he'd prefer to see them in his hand, though. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that means he's pitched all, all reds at some point. Yeah, he pitched a lot of blues as well, right? So, yeah. um, the blue count of the deck is probably around that like 16, 18 to 20 range. Um, probably, mm -hmm. yeah, not, yeah, you're probably in the 16 to 18s. Um, 18 is pretty standard. So, we're going to snap back for one here. It is turn one, so yeah, we're gonna block with a red sink blow. Yep. Happy to get that red sink blow. Blazing for one, yeah. Yikes. Blazing for one. I mean That could have been a really great turn for Guy if uh if that scalding rain or that snapback were a different color. I don't think red scalding rain is run in the deck, but I know that he probably runs red snapback, so um definitely could have been better, but you know, at least he got two damage in. Nothing nothing crazy. But yeah, for sure. On Nolan so too, he really could have punished the uh, the Azalea player there. Yeah, um, for sure. And it's not even the Nolan. Um, just Azalea tends to be a very, very red heavy deck, um, just in general. So surely, I would think the Kano matchup is going to be pretty favored um, in terms of the Kano. But we'll have to see a take game starting here. We're going to reload off the take game. I believe that one is for plus two. I think so as well. Flip it over with the cross rep. Yep. Yep. We're gonna opt. Take a look at the top. Decide to Azalea. Sleep Dart is actually Dart. not bad, um, since he won't be able to Kano. But he is gonna put it on the bottom. Yeah. So it's looking for a dominate attack here. Ooh, Remorseless ooh, is pretty yeah, remorseless. good. Remorseless. Yikes. Yeah. So that is about as ooh nimbleism on that too. So we are looking at a dominate Remorseless. The base attack is what Dante? You're <laughs> the wrong guy, buddy. <laughs> Oh, okay, plus two, plus three, five, and then I think it's for six. So I think we're looking at eleven dominate here. 
which is uh, quite a bit of damage. Um, oh yeah. What's the, on, what the, what's the on hit effect for Morse? So, so every time he plays an action, he has to a pay life. a life. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty bad for Kano. Yeah, especially when you only start at fifteen. Um, and you're getting smacked for what looks like eleven. Okay, so it's ten dominate. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, plus two plus five. So it's only is is Remorseless five base or six base? Sorry, I seem like such a noob now, but um, well, I mean, you don't frequently see the ranger cards. So okay, five base and yeah, ten, ten dominate, ten dominate. <laughs> Thank God for the chat, eh? Hey, there we go. Couple pog champs for Ryan. You said it was. Yep, Ryan Adventure Get Co. Some Gaming. Pog champs in the chat for Ryan, boys. Thank God. Um. So it looks like we're just pitching for Kano. I think he realizes that he's not going to be able to do much. Yeah, uh, getting hit by that uh, Morsus on his turn is going to be rough. Ah, oh, Red Voltic Bolt. He would have loved to see that last turn. <laughs> uh, I feel like he's decently happy to rip it off this turn. I mean, let's let's consider this as well. Like, we're Azalea. We have no cards in hand, no resources. Um, yeah, exactly. It's just how much damage can I do to the Azalea this turn? Obviously, you're going to be taking a lot, but... At the same time, I don't think you mind too, too much. Mm -hmm. um, he's probably not going to end up blocking. And then even when the Remorseless does hit, it won't matter because it'll just go right back to, uh, to Moody's turn here. So it won't be too big of an issue. Yep. So we will look to the Crucible and then Voltic Bolt for six. Um, just going to take six here down to 12. And we still got a, that 11, sorry, 10 Dominate Remorseless waiting on the board. So will he opt to block? I'm assuming he'll probably throw one card in front yeah, of it. Yeah, for sure. Throw one yeah. card out there. Um, and it's going to be a red Aether red Spindle. Aether spindle. Mm -hmm. So I would assume he has a blue card in hand, red card in Arsenal, looking to burn out some damage. Um, obviously he's going to take one when he plays that action. Yeah, we'll see what it ends up being. Um, he might just opt to, to pass his turn back. Um, yeah, I really feel like if he blocks with red Aether Spindle, either he's got a dud red in his hand, he can't do anything, or he just pitches this and plays a red. Okay, just passes no, it. Yeah, yeah, he just passes doesn't his have turn. it. Yeah. I've seen this guy play too many times, I know. Oh, yeah? I know. You wouldn't expect like the red Voltic Bolt to come out to put him down to, what is it, seven? Make it significantly easier to kill him. No. He's probably got a lot of Fork Durster in his arsenal right now, and he's just waiting to absolutely blow him out. Yeah, well, That's what he does to me. <laughs> well, yeah. So stir forked metacarpus nodes crucible is lethal right now since it's fourteen. Um, yeah. Outside of a sigil of solace, of course. So, looks like we're going for an e strike five go again. Um, just again, put more pressure on, get more damage in. Uh, this ranger deck seems very wide. Uh, from my understanding, it's when you're running the red liner, you're usually going wider, and then when you're running the um, the death dealer you're going tall is that correct um not necessarily but yes kind of i mean it, it totally depends like i haven't seen too many azalea builds most of the stuff i've played against has been just running into uh sasha markovic because he <laughs> tried to pet deck that for a while and i had to go through the pain of playing against it over and over again yep. so yeah, i've seen everything i've seen three of three of a kind otk uh, oh sickum shot is not bad here um, obviously we're just committing so many resources uh, we're going shields down no razor reflex so it's just going to be for four here um, not even threatening lethal as a can you're pretty okay taking this but you're probably going to block since you already blocked with two cards um, mm. and take one down to five I mean this is alien deck is pretty much solid red uh, so far we've seen a couple yellows but yeah I mean that's that's rough going into this Kano I think Kano's actually probably had to have some pretty bad draws to um for it to be as close as it is right now. There's the That's e -pot. not bad, though. S slapping down an E-Pot at the end of your turn and then getting it draw back up again. It's uh, pretty good. He's also got the counter on his tunic now. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, just an extra resource. They both do it, actually, at this point. So it's not bad. As they say, all gas, no brakes, you know? Yeah, exactly. What's that, a knock? I have not seen. Yeah, um, yeah it's a knock to Death Whistle. Yeah, yeah it's she's going to search. Okay, yeah. I mean... I wonder what he searches here because, like, uh, you know, obviously he's going to Bristol. put it on the top. I think that Nocta has to reload as well. Put it on the top, dominate Sleep Dart. Um, hopefully he can present Lethal, even kind of the Tunic block, and keep a blue. It seems hard because I think Nock might be the only blue in his deck. 
Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Sleep dart on top, and then... Yeah, it does have uh, reload. He'll use the Azalea ability, put that on the bottom. Yep, sleep and then, dart. Yeah, we got a dominated sleep dart coming in here. Yep, only one card in hand. He's going to have to pay for the sleep dart. Or, sorry, two cards two in cards hand. Two cards in hand, yep. Yeah, I fell for the illusion. <laughs> uh, uh, pitching webcam hand. classic. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you have no idea how many cards are in my hand. Um, but yeah, it looks like he's just going to pitch to play it. Coming well, in for six damage, I believe. Sleep dart red. Uh, sure, Dante. I I really don't know. I'll be honest. <laughs> <with you. laughs> yeah. I think it is. Again, you're asking the wrong person. It's for five. Like Dima said, obvious. Everything in Ranger is four or five at red. Come on. I have no idea. <laughs> I, I, I I have no clue. But hey. all right, so five anyway. Um, it looks like he will be. The issue is that there is a. Um, uh, counter on his tunic so he could be showing a razor here uh, but we did just see him pitch one so i feel yeah. like the chances of that happening are pretty low um you think there's a possibility that he just blocks with a uh just with his tunic and calls it a day so yeah of course it's a possibility um yeah. so we're five i mean it's still like lethal so i don't know what he's playing around if he does that um but i do think this is the last turn sequence of the game Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess there's no downside. Yeah, I would imagine that it's just going to be like deal a lot of damage here, and Oops. then yeah. if you can't kill him for whatever reason, you just block with your tunic, uh, and then just proceed to possibly kill him on the next turn if you just play on his turn. So, uh, we'll see what he ends up deciding to do here. He is using the boots, so uh, you know something big's coming. Um, yep, pops the booties. Yeah, Ooh, the reverberate. Yeah, the red reverberate, the ever popularized in the past two weeks, red reverberate to play something out of hand at instant speed. I like it. Um, also, yep. no rune too, so there's no possibility to block this. Nope. Um, surely is going to be devastating. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm imagining that something pretty big is going to be happening here. Uh, we'll see if he decides to defend with the card in his hand. Uh, does that make you go? Maybe it is that razor. <laughs> Maybe it is. Yep. So he's uh, going down to eight. Uh, so blocking the tunic just forces the razor, the resource of the tunic. Okay. Um, yeah. So off this reverberate trigger, we're going to metacarpus nodes and we're going to play lessons in lava and then we're probably going to get blazing ether and then Kano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I was a betting man. Uh, yeah. I don't know, man. I think, I think you might be right on this one. So uh, yeah, seven and yeah. So it's going to be 14 damage because Sorry, it's just for seven. So it's gonna yeah. So he's done seven. And he's gonna blazing ether Kano. Bla oh, is that a chain that he banishes? Oh, uh, so he probably has the blazing in his arsenal mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, yeah. He plays the chain, gets some more damage. Chain uh, is from play the blazing as an instant. Is chain from hand though, or is it your next wizard? Ability? No, chain would be the next. Kano. Okay, okay. So he puts Good. chain on top here with uh, lesson, and then he yeah. pitches, Boom. plays the chain, some more free damage. Um, and then he plays the blazing from his arsenal and shakes his opponent's hand. Yeah, so that's going to be an additional three here off the seven. So we're looking at a 20 damage turn if nothing is blocked. <laughs> it's kind of a lot. Yeah, uh, wizard attack. Then, there, yeah. Yes, there we go. We'll play the blazing ether. The arsenal, call it a day. All right, well played, Guy. Um, obviously a tough matchup for Azalea with all those red cards. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, there's not a yeah. whole lot you can do. But we're actually going to cut to break really really quick because in five minutes that card i talk about is getting spoiled we're actually Ooh, so after wait yeah you refused to show it to me so i finally get to see it yeah i didn't shut to anybody so after it's spoiled on the community discord we're gonna come back on stream it's just gonna be me and then that beautiful man dante right next to me and we're gonna be talk we're gonna have the picture on the screen and we're gonna talk about it as well um but yeah if you're in the flesh and blood tcg community discord go there now it's about to drop and I think it's going to blow your mind. I'm not even kidding. I think it's going to blow your mind. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I can't wait to see it. Be right back.
Hands, hands in front of my eyes. All right. Oh, dude, I got a re-screen region. No, I don't. No, I don't. I just got to click you. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Oh, no, it's messed up. But, like, like I'll get you while you talk about it because this is it. Okay, can I read it now? Yeah, I'm yeah, you're good. You're good. You're good. Like, weeks for this. Once per turn action, attack. What the fuck? D okay, wait, hold Shadow on. Shadow token <laughs> demon ally? Watch the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot we're on stream. <laughs> oh, whatever blast. It's blast effect. No? Yeah. Whatever blast effect attacks, you may banish a shadow card from your hand. If you do, you may banish a card from the defending hero's soul. Once per turn action that costs nothing, attack for six? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, demon ally? <laughs> Yeah, that, okay, so that, so it just stays on the field forever. Well, you can get it off the field. With what? At least have to kill it, dude. Mm. Oh, it has six life. Yes, bro. It's you attack the top. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So it can be hit with arcane, but I think you can defend it with arcane because it says it cannot be defended by defense, right? It's defense value is physical. Yeah. But it doesn't say anything about arcane. I just ha would have to look at. Let me look at arcane armor here. It like, says only to yourself. At the end of the turn, heal all damage dealt. Ah, uh, yeah. So null rune doesn't even block it. So you just have to attacking him. So null rune says if your hero would be dealt arcane damage, you may pay one instead. If you do prevent one arcane damage, that starts to do. But only hero. So not your your demon ally. <laughs> Bro, how crazy is this car? Yeah, that's wild. <laughs> I hyped God. you up. I hyped it, but like it's just. <laughs> That is the weirdest thing. It's game changing. Demon ally. Oh my! I can't wait to see what uh, what chains is. What? Ah, oh, dude. Extraordinary <laughs> <It's laughs> taken damage equal to their life at the end of the turn. Heal all damage dealt. Yeah, that's crazy. It's is, so. Is there any other way to defend it though? Like, is I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Or does your opponent basically just have to eat six and then not even attack you and attack your... Yeah, I mean, I assume it's like a, a tempo... Yeah, like a tempo play. But, like, it's obviously, it's, like, very hard to get out, right? But like Yeah, okay, of course. Yeah, I mean, you just... I mean, for this, you only have to have six blood debts in your... um, In your banish zone. But you can be... Like, you know, the whole thing with Levia is if you're going to be getting this out, let's say constructed Levia, right? You're going to be yeah. dodging your, your blood debt cost by using her ability and getting a six in the banish... Uh, and by doing that, you can get this Blasphemet token out. So what yeah. I, like, once per turn action, attack. Like, so if Blasphemet effect goes away, do you summon another Blasphemet if you have six? No, because you would need the, you would need Doomstand. I'm so stupid. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's crazy. Like, it's a crazy card. Demon ally. Like, when I saw all this, I remember I was on the, a phone, the phone with Sasha, and he was just like, he, like, had to call me so that I could get my, get my reaction. I was like, demon ally? I was like, what is this? Uh, uh, that is, uh, is, the, is, the, is there anything like this in like other card games like, uh, like, I mean I'm sure there's like pets like a like, pet yeah. yeah I don't know that's that crazy. crazy do you think Chains is going to be a demon ally too I think it'll be an, yeah I do actually I think it'll be a demon ally I think we're going to get it in the next couple hours actually pretty how do soon I, how do I get my cold foil Blasphemet token I don't know it's probably going to be in the set after kingdoms right <laughs> Maybe. Or like my, my foil one. I don't but like, know. Dude, that's cool. This just fundamentally yeah. changes flesh and blood, right? Like, like we've been seeing like all this crazy stuff. We're like, right, we're using the Banished Stone. Crazy. We have talents. Crazy. But now it's like allies. It's like, what what kind of design space is this open? Like, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Those cards that say like attack all heroes, does that also hit? No, nah, I'm assuming allies? it's not a hero. It's just an ally, right? Okay. I don't know if it's. A, I don't know if it. Like I would that. assume it's not another opponent either. So, hmm. um, yeah, interesting. It's weird. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, that's a strange one. That's for sure. <laughs> I wonder if there's any way to, to defend it. Cost yeah. nothing. Attack for six. <laughs> I mean, you could like snag, right? What does snag do? Is I, I can't remember what snag does. I snag just it. stops you from uh, adding like attack basically. And yeah. So there's got to be some sort of evasion, um, like that doesn't come to mind immediately that you can do on this. But yeah, 
Yeah, I have no idea. I have to look at like all the rest of the cards that got released with Monarch as well as some like existing stuff. But yeah, this does seem pretty wild. I want to yeah. see the art bigger. This thing looks disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Ugh. Yeah, I know it's funny because we're all asking like the same thing. Like, can this card target this? Can that? Because we have to go back and read them and be like, does it say like to your hero or like all this kind of stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah. Because, like, you never had to think, like, does Null Rune only target my hero? It's, like, obviously Null Rune because it's, like, I'm only my hero. Gain three life implies yourself, but it's not explicit. So, yeah, I guess it'll have to be, um, like, Sigil Assault would have to be something that we have to look at in, like, the release notes, right? Uh, yeah, this is the last thing I was expecting, to be honest. I thought it was going to be, like, a token that you summon, but it basically, like, swaps out your hero. So I thought Levia was going to transform into something else, basically, when you play the uh, Doomsday token. But then I think this is cooler. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> what the? Yeah, I'm just looking at the artwork right now. This thing looks yucky. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, kind of want to play Levian now. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I know it's crazy. All right. Well, you got Dante's hot take. You saw him respond in real time. But I hope you guys enjoyed Blastomet. I hope you guys enjoyed Fab Gauntlet um, and what we're doing here, trying to be, bring you know bring you competitive flesh and blood every week, um, give the players you know all around the world a place to compete um, at the highest level. So yeah, uh, we're gonna cut to break just before we get into the next round. But I'll let you guys simmer with Blastomet and think about it. And who knows, maybe we will get Ursa tonight as well. <laughs> there you go. We'll see you guys soon. See ya. Yeah, this is frustrating now, right? Yeah, that thing's fucking crazy. <laughs>
And we are live. So we have another wizard player. Not Gui this time. This is actually going to be Farm Tulery, who's been playing with us for a it's while. Gui, not Gui. Come on. <laughs> Sorry, man. Don't, don't disrespect my boy like that. I just mispronounced on the what spot, dude. What is going on, man? Uh, you know what it's like to do. I'm doing introductions <laughs> over here. You just flame me. But yeah, we've got Farm Tulery on the wizard versus... Uh, sorry, it's not Farm Tulery. It's Amusing on the wizard versus Farm Tulery on the Ira. Mm -hmm. And... Why don't you give me your thoughts from the Irish perspective, looking down this wizard, while I change up these names, Dante? Sure, yeah. So, as an Ira player, I am uh, definitely not running the, the Null Rune boots here. Um, I guess it depends on how aggressive your deck is, but if he's running the Needle into... Um, and, well, I guess he usually just runs with a uh, Needle, but I would usually opt to use the Snapdragon Scalers just to um, enable more go-again on, like on a larger combo turn. Um, it just helps with keeping the aggression up and keeping cards out of the wizard's hand. Uh, but basically, as the Ira player, you're basically just trying to rush down the, the Kano as fast as you can. Uh, your best friend in your deck is your Razor Reflex. Um, that is the, the card that you know single-handedly wins you games against Kano, I find. Um, if you pair it with something like an E-Strike, it's just devastating for the Kano player. Um, the other thing is basically like Kano is just trying to whittle you down slowly and then finish you off with a big turn once he's at, um, you know, a low amount of life basically. So, uh, as the hour player, you're essentially just racing him, but you can output a lot more damage, uh, than he can in a turn. Uh, so as long as you, um, are able to keep up the pressure, um, and defend effectively, uh, it shouldn't be too, too difficult. Um, I find that a lot of the difficulty that I have when I'm going up against Kano's is specifically when I don't see any razors whatsoever. Um, the matches can get a little bit, uh, a little bit tough. But um, I guess yeah, we'll see. Like, we'll see how they draw. Looks like we swapped to the Snapdragon Scalers here. No Rune Four oh, is yeah, is No Rune Four is actually an option if you're running double razor. You're also, you're already going super fast. Um, like we have to think back to the days when like Ira Control had to play against Kano, and Ira Control played against Kano with no razors, and sometimes even cutting the sigils of solace is towards the later end. Um, in which case, sometimes you would run that Noble Rune Four, force the Kano to OTK you. Um, but yeah, I still agree with you. Like I always think, I think the boots are better because um, you can just out. You, you're always like threat of activation on the boots just really makes the Kano think. Like as soon as one yeah. attack comes through, they have to go like, "Am I blocking this? If I am, what are the what are the boots doing?" And then double razor is just brutal. Like double razor is so good for Ira now that the it's an auto include in these um, aggressively oriented Ira decks. Yeah, it's made Kano's matchup against Ira much harder. But silver lining, Ira doesn't usually run the sigils of solaces anymore, which are also very hard to play around if you're Kano. Um, yeah. yeah, so it's an interesting matchup nowadays, but yeah, we did we did um, eventually see the Snapdragon Scalos come out of Farm Tulare here. The the issue that I find with um, uh, with running the Null Rune 4 on Ira is that if you're against like a good Kano opponent, um, they're just going to block the majority of your damage and yep. basically stack the bottom of their deck. Yep, on OTK you. Yeah. Go for a huge OTK turn um, that you that you can't stop. Um, with the Snapdragons, because it allows you to be more aggressive, it basically makes it so that the Kano player has to play with the cards that they're given, not necessarily set up a giant turn to just destroy you, basically. Yeah. Uh, but it looks like he's getting two red Voltic Bolts out right out of the gate. So not that's, bad, eh? That's pretty good. You love to see it as the uh, as the Ira player. Those Voltic Bolts are pretty annoying. They almost are guaranteed. Well, they're pretty much guaranteed. Yeah, to hit you for, for three damage each, so... Um, any time that you can avoid getting uh, chip damage from the Kano uh, is ideal. So we'll see. Um, we'll see what the Kano is able to come back with here. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, seeing those razor reflexes soon, sooner rather than later, would be great. But yeah, I mean, speaking towards OTK, like um, some people thought, you know, kind of had this mindset that OTK was a archetype in Kano. Uh, it really wasn't. It was just kind of a strategy that all Kano decks could employ against very slow decks. And Ivor Control mm -hmm. with 4 Nolrun was an incredibly slow deck against Kano, um, yeah. relatively. Because the damage output is just super easy to telegraph. Like, you can basically tell... Uh, you'll know as much... You know exactly how much is going to come relatively um, every single turn, and therefore you can pitch those 4 blues, stack the deck with the you know stir-forked blazing, um, yeah, and then just triple Kano when you have your pots out, when you get to that, that strategy might actually, it's kind of in a weird spot now because once we, when we were playing those decks and we knew we were going up in Ira controls and slow decks, we had to practice it a lot and we learned how to do it. I would say nowadays, most Kanos are probably going to be unpracticed in that strategy. Um, 
with that being said, it's not too hard to employ. You just need to count the, you really just need to count how many cards you've pitched and you're just going to get that four to six uh, cards as a buffer of blues. And then you talismanic lens, fix the draw um, either before you draw, you know, the number of cards or after to 